Dundalk, as we see there, still topping the table on 28 points. So to this weekend's FAI Ford Cup third round, when the draw was made, the standout tie of the round was surely the all-Premier Division match between Dundalk and St. Patrick's Athletic. Now the uh, Dundalk mascot Lily the Panda was in good form before the match. The Louds club hoping to continue Pat's drought in the cup. John Kenny was at Oriel Park. The third meeting of the size this season with Pats winning one and the other game ending in a draw in their two league meetings this season. And the visitors almost opened the scoring in the very first minute. As to Dundalk old boy Alex Williams thundered a shot off the post. Ryan Guy with the follow-up and also Conor Kenna squandered chances to open the scoring for the visitors. Moments later Dundalk wasted a great chance to score themselves when defender Gary Breen found room in the box but after chesting the ball down he made a real hash of the shot and the chance was wasted. The Dogs' disciplinary record last season wasn't much to write home about, and they can have very little complaints about their first sending off, as Kieran McGuigan was given a straight red card by referee Anthony Bunnamer for a lunge on Ian Birmingham. Just a minute later, Dundalk were reduced to nine when JJ Melligan also got a straight red for an off the ball incident. It was spotted by assistant Mark Douglas, and like McGuigan, Melligan was sent to the line leaving Dundalk with a mountain to climb, but nil-nil at half-time. With only nine men, Dundalk mounted a rearguard action as Pats piled forwards. Dave Mulcahy sent a Brian Guy, whose cross was sent just wide by Williams. Pats continued to press and even had the luxury of sending defenders forward as central defender Conor Kenna saw his effort bounce off the Dundalk crossbar. The nine men of Dundalk sat deep in their half, trying desperately to force a replay. And when the back forwards breached, Peter Cherry was on hand, this time saving brilliantly from Williams' header. Ryan Guy was perhaps the most potent threat all night for St. Pat's, and the American was desperately unlucky to see his strike hit the inside of the post with Cherry stranded, and Kenna put the rebound over. With the time running out, St. Pat's got the winner. Guy with the throw, panic in the Dundalk area, and substitute Brian Cash slammed in the winner to send the visitors into the next round. Dundalk's woes didn't finish there as they were reduced to eight men as Breen got a straight red card for yet another off the ball incident. A late, late show for Pete Mahan's side, but one was enough to put his team through to tonight's last 16 draw. I thought we defended incredibly well, you know, we, we managed to keep them in front of us and, and defend properly and, and head balls in the box and, and stop crosses and um, limited them at times to, to shots from outside the box. But, um, you know, we got to the 89th minute and they've popped up and, and scored, which is which is hard to take. I thought we were very, very good in the first half when I was 11 v 11. I mean, that's probably the best we played now in a while. So that was pleasing. But the most important thing was to win the game. I mean, this was a tough draw. You know, we, we were dealt... A bad hand coming up here, but um, no, I'm just happy with the win. I'm in the next round and to keep the dream alive. Mm, Richie, you were at that game at Oriel Park, and Pete's talking about keeping the dream alive. In 1961, the last time Pats won the cup, which is an amazing statistic, really, but a great win. It is, yeah. As soon as I got involved with the club, that was the first thing that most supporters said. He said, you know, it's been so long since we've won it. Um, they, they probably deserved the win overall, but um, it was a minute before half-time. Dundalk just pressed the self-destruct button. Um, two players rightfully sent off, and although the goal had been scored by the time the third one sent off, if you get three players sent off, legitimately sent off, you don't deserve to win a game of football. Um, and I do sympathise with Dundalk because, I mean, it's a sucker blow to lose any goal in the last minute, but the, the, the effort, particularly in the second half, that those nine players put in um, mm. was, was huge. Um, so they would have felt aggrieved. I mean, the poor referee, I felt sorry from the end, he was nearly getting lynched. But all, uh, all the three sentences off were, were correct decisions. Yeah, I think so Ian Foster him. himself admitted that afterwards. Owen. And as a manager, yeah. you'd be very disappointed. Wouldn't you? I mean, the extraordinary but thing is Dundalk haven't had a player sent off all season, then three in one game. Well, this is a big test for the manager. Never mind, I mean, Ian is talking about, you know, it was bad luck that they, you know, they defended well. But there's inevitability about the result when you're down to nine and then eight at the end of it. He's got a big task on his hands. And this is, this is where he's going to test his mettle as a manager. He's a rookie manager. And this is a big test for him. In what way? It, well, a rookie man, so how do you test the discipline in your club? I mean, if you're going to get guys sent off for those things there, forget it. You've got to get them down. You want to get the effort. He made a comment also about you. Know, he wants defenders to go in hard, but not, not recklessly. You don't want to be sort of 
it, they're backlit now. They're going to get suspensions because of ill discipline. Mm. So this is a test for the manager. Mm. But it, it wasn't. It wasn't even a question of going in hard. I mean, the first the first challenge was it was a two footer lunge. Yeah, no yeah. excuse. It, you have to. It was go. A red. The, the second one though, I think it was a hand gesture by a player towards the fans. And if you're daft enough to do that, do it discreetly. This fellow went up and did it right in front of the linesman. Yeah. So he's no excuse. He had to go. And then Gary Breen at the end, I think he, I think he struck a player, went to kick mm. a player, did something. Again, did it frustration, in front of the but frustrated. But yeah. everyone gets. Yeah. He's not the first player in the world to be frustrated. But you can't go kicking people. Yeah. Pat, you were saying earlier on that you fancy that St. Pat's mm. could be the team for the cup this year. Why? Uh, Richie's left, I think. That was my <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think um, I just you know they've started off very very well. A lot of people sort of felt that they might not be as good as they were in the past couple of years. Um, Pete's come in, he's done a great job. He's the type of man who will always motivate players. Um, and I just have a little sneaky suspicion that it could be their year. Mm. I, I hope we don't want to put a kiss of death in them, but I just think this mm. is Pat's year for the Cup. And I suppose we'll probably hear it a few times tonight, but for Dundalk and Ian Foster, now they can concentrate on the league at least, you know, and I'm sure there are a few other managers who'd be trotting out that yeah, line as well. Absolutely, but I mean, as, as the lads have said, there's a big body blow from him. I mean, there's three guys gone, so more than likely they're going to miss the same match. They have a few injuries, so it's it's a big kick in the teeth as well. I mean, outside of the game, it's also going to affect their league. That's something actually that's come up on this programme, Owen, over the previous weeks, that Dundalk squad maybe isn't as big as some of the other clubs. And if they do clock up either injuries or the inevitable suspensions that they're going to get now, it could be problematic. It will be. It's not could be, will be. You know, they are a small squad. And this, again, is a, a test of the manager's mental and how he goes about c controlling that. You, know, you, you cannot afford to be given away. Plus, they're getting wages. And what are they doing? Sitting in the stand watching now? Mm. Okay. Well, we're going to uh, move on now.